Hey guys, welcome to Code6 YouTube channel. The problem that we are going to discuss today is partition it. The problem appeared in starter 17 of November 21 and is a difficulty level of easy. The prerequisites to solve this problem include sieve of eratosthenes. The problem statement goes as follows. Chef has n numbers that is from 1 to n. Now he wants to give exactly k of these numbers to his friend and keep the rest with him. So there is a condition given that he can choose any k numbers such that the GCD of any number from his set and from his friend's set is equal to 1. That is formally GCD of a comma b is equal to 1 where a belongs to capital set a and b belongs to capital set b. Okay and it is fair enough that if the one set contains k elements the other set will contain n minus k elements because we are distributing all the elements from 1 to n. Okay, so the element will either be in chef's set or his friend's set. So chef needs your help in choosing these k numbers. So we will be given uh, in each test case we will be given the integer n and k and we have to tell whether it is possible to find any such valid set that is first, first of all yes or no. If yes then uh, we have to print any such set. Okay. Uh, there may be many possible solutions but anyone will be fine. So first of all we have to tell whether the answer is yes or no and then we have to print the set if the answer is yes. So to take an example if the value of n is 4 and let's say the value of k is 2. So chef can give his friend the set 1 comma 3. So the other set will contain the number 2 comma 4. So you can see that if you form any pair between uh, these two sets their GCD is always going to be 1. So the answer in this case is going to be yes and you can output any of these two sets because both of them contain two elements. So in uh, this is a pretty easy case but uh, it is more than enough to understand the basic idea of the question. So I hope you are clear with the problem statement now. Let's move towards the solution approach. The solution approach goes as follows. Let's say we are considering the example for n equals to 10. So we have 10 numbers with us that is from 1 to 10. Now if you try to group the numbers together definitely such numbers cannot be put in different sets whose GCD is greater than 1. Like for example you cannot put 4 over here and 6 in the other set. Why? Because they definitely have a, a divisor that is greater than 1. Okay. In fact their GCD which is 2 is greater than 1. So you cannot keep them in different sets. So they have to be in the same set. So what we can do is we can find what numbers are connected with each other in the sense that they have GCD greater than 1. So if you see all multiples of 2's are going to have GCD greater than 2 among each other. Okay, or GCD, sorry, GCD greater than 1 among each other. So numbers like 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 will be together in whichever set they go in the first set or the second set. All these numbers are always going to be together present in one set. Now let's try to see what happens for 3. If you take the number 3, again there are some multiples of 3's like 3, then we have 6, then we have 9. So again, these numbers, are, uh, these numbers as well 3, 6 and 9 are going to be together in one set. So if you take the number 5, we have a multiple of 5 that is 10. So again 5 and 10 are also going to be together. So like this you can find connected components if you are aware with the concepts of graph. You can find the size of different connected components that you are going to get depending on their uh, GCDs. Okay or depending on their prime factors. You can find the size of connected components and then you will have some components like uh, one will be a single, ele uh, single element then you will have two, four, six, eight, ten and also three and also five in one single component. Why? Because, th because they are connected to each other in some way. All the multiples of twos are connected with each other then we have 10 connected with 5 and we have 6 connected with 3. So all of them have to be together. And then one more number is left that is 7. 
so we have got total three different uh, components now the question had an integer k so we want exactly k numbers in one of our set so how to create this number k this k number can be created using these different components that we have so let's say how many numbers are present over here here only one number is present here also only one number is present and here total eight numbers are present so if k was equal to 8 our problem was solved we'll just output this set if k was 9 we will include 1 with this or we can even include 7 with this set okay does not matter so k will be formed using the size of this different connected components so this sounds like a knapsack problem but there's a better approach to this question as well which involves number theory and primes let's see that approach as well so that approach goes something like this so we have uh, a set with us let's uh, say for in, in the beginning that set is empty okay and uh, with the set we also have the numbers so the numbers range from 1 all the way up to n so what we are going to do all the prime numbers prime numbers p such that p into 2 is less than equal to n we are going to put these prime numbers in this set so let's take the example of uh, 13 okay so let's take the example of 13 so what numbers do we have we have all the numbers up to 13 okay and what is uh, so yeah what are the prime numbers the prime numbers are 2 3 5 7 11 and 13 itself so amongst these which are the prime numbers such that the prime number into 2 is less than equal to n so 2 is 1 so we can put 2 in the set we can also put 3 in the set we can also put 5 in the set now all the remaining prime numbers keep them in the other set so we have another set as well okay so put all the prime numbers over there remaining prime numbers so we have 7 11 and 13 over here okay so whichever numbers are done let's just erase them uh, for now so 2 and 3 are done uh, 11 is done 5 is also done and 7 and 13 are done now all the numbers that remain as you can see over here they are composite numbers okay and also we, we also have one so let's put one in the second set so i'm putting one over here and all the remaining numbers if you see that is 4 6 8 9 10 and 12 they are guaranteed to have a prime factor in the first set why because they are composite numbers right so they are definitely going to have a, a factor less than n by 2 okay so if you just uh, see for all the composite numbers that are remaining they are definitely going to go in the first set because they are either a multiple of 2 or they are a multiple of 3 or they are a multiple of 5 simple so all these numbers will go over uh, go over here so what are the numbers uh, let me put the numbers over here so we have 4 6 8 9 10 and 12 so all the numbers are done now okay so our 13 numbers are distributed in the two sets we have our two sets and all the numbers are distributed the first set contains how many elements the first set uh, contains 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 total 9 elements over here and total 4 elements over here right now you can see that these two sets are ideal okay the first set contains nine elements the second set contains four elements and if you form a pair a comma b such that a belongs to first set and b belongs to second set 
the gcd is always going to be 1 why because in second set we only have prime numbers first of all and that clearly uh, allows us to make the gcd as 1 why because all these prime numbers the smallest multiple that is prime number into 2 is out of the range right that's why we put all the prime numbers is that prime number into 2 less than n in the set 1 remember so so far so good so if k is either 9 or 4 we definitely have an answer right if k was 9 or if k was 4 in the question we definitely have an answer but k can be given as anything so how do we check if for that particular k we can create such a set or not simple we have the second set we can choose an element from the second set and put it in the first set does not harm us right only the size of first set will increase and the size size of second set will decrease so if i say that the size of first set is c1 size of second set is c2 so if k is less than equal to c2 we have an answer right what we'll do we'll just pick up elements from the second set and put it in the first set or if k is greater than equal to c1 then also we have an answer why because one and the same thing when we shift the element from second set to first set the size of second set gets reduced so it is handled over here or else if the element is going in the first set then the first set is increasing so the size increases so that is handled over here so once we have these two sets initial sets created that is we know their size that is 9 and 4 we can easily comment by seeing the value of k that is if k is greater than equal to c2 or if k is less uh, sorry if k is less than equal to c2 or if k is greater than equal to c1 we definitely have an answer so in that case what we are going to print we are going to print yes okay and we have to also print the actual set right containing the k elements simple let's say if k was 11 then you will print all the nine numbers and two numbers on the second set if k was let's say 2 so you will only print the first two numbers all other numbers go in the first set okay so i hope you understood the solution approach uh, it involves prime numbers again why because the question was based on gcd and gcd is nothing but a play of prime numbers only so if you are thorough with prime numbers you can easily solve this question now the biggest question that remains is that how do you know if a number is prime or not because first of all when we got the number n we wrote all the numbers from 1 to n picked up the prime numbers checked if the number p into 2 is less than equal to n and put it in the first set right so for that we need to know which number is prime so for that we can use the technique of sieve of eratosthenes which is quite popular in competitive programming to determine whether a number is prime or not so we'll pre compute initially for all the numbers whether it is a prime number or not and later on use it to our advantage so with that we complete the solution approach now let's see the implementation in c++ so the implementation goes as follows uh, i have a c function and some arrays which i am going to initialize by calling the c function so what this c function does basically for all the numbers from 1 to max it stores whether that number is prime or not okay in a boolean array after that the main code begins so we take the input for number of test cases after that we take the input for n and k then i create my two vectors v1 and v2 so these are our two sets basically initially the first set is empty and the second set contains one element that is 1 because i for sure know that the element 1 the number 1 is going to go in the second set so i just put it over here and the count or the size of the set is c1 and c2 and because we have one element in v2 i have c2 as one now i check all the numbers from 2 to n if it's not a prime number it means it's a composite number i put it in the set first set that is in v1 and i increment the size as well 
else if the number is prime i check if the number into 2 that is p into 2 is less than equal to n i put it in the first set or else in the second set as discussed then i have to check my conditions if k is less than equal to c2 or k is greater than equal to c1 the answer is yes and if k is less than equal to c2 i print the numbers from the uh, second set because that's the condition right uh, or else i need to print the numbers from the first set and some numbers from the second set so blindly i just completely print the first set that is for auto x v1 c out x and from the second set i need to print the remainder of numbers so k minus c1 numbers are printed from the second set and that's it that completes the solution uh, in the other case i just print the uh, string no because the answer is not possible in any other case so that completes the implementation uh, now let's submit the code on codechef id to test the correctness great so our solution works i hope you guys understood the solution approach the problem as well as the implementation if you have any doubts you can post them in the comments below i'll try to answer as much as i can